Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simiou. And on today's episode, we've got a fair bit to get through. We're going to bring you information on Arsenal's early pre-season training camp. We'll bring you up to speed with what's happening this year around the Emirates Cup. We're also going to talk Johan Bakayoko, who's being linked with a move to Arsenal, the Belgian international said to be on our radar. And we're going to discuss the reported asking price for Eddie and Ketia, which to me feels a little bit steep. I um, hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday. The sun is shining in London town. It is baking hot. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to complain because I absolutely love it. The only problem is that damned hay fever keeps causing me an issue. Um, you know, people get itchy eyes and they sneeze a bit and all the rest of it. And that's fine. I can live with that. I'd rather have a bit of that, but have the great weather. The problem I get, guys, is that it makes my throat tingle. And when you talk for a living, that is a big, big problem because it's really difficult to speak for any period of time without needing to cough. And nobody wants to hear a cough in their headphones. But we survive, uh, we move forward and we continue to push through here on the Chronicles of Aguna pod. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help us as we continue here on YouTube to push towards 35,000 subscribers. If you're listening on audio, please do leave us a review as well. Make sure you're subscribed, etc., etc. It really does help as we build the community even further. Big thank you to everyone that has already because we've gained an incredible amount of subscribers just over uh, the last few weeks, which has been fantastic. But anyway, without further ado, then let's get into our first story of the day. And we're going to discuss this early training camp that seems to be uh, operating at the moment as Arsenal look to build up to another Premier League season. It ain't that far away, you know. So, according to reports, Ben White, Eddie Nketia, Jurian Timber, Rhys Nelson, Emile Smith Rowe, and Fabio Vieira have all joined up with Mikel Arteta in Marbella to work on their fitness and form. They joined up on Monday, and Martin Erdegaard, the club's captain, is due to join the group in the coming days as well. So, look, it's a Euro season, um, there's a summer tournament not just here in Europe, but also over in the Americas as well. The Copa America is currently underway, which means that you're going to get players in for preseason later than you'd like. And in a lot of cases, key players. Can you do much about that? No, because you can't deny these players the opportunity to go and represent their country at the biggest tournaments. That wouldn't be fair. You can't do anything about it, really. But what you can do is you can, at the very, very least, try and make sure that the guys you do have available to you from now are fit, are ready to go, and in some cases are ready to hold the fort until those uh, aforementioned players are ready to come back in. Because look, I was talking about this earlier on with my dad on the phone. We were talking about, you know, Arsenal and the start of the new season, et cetera, et cetera. And we were trying to figure out like how it's all going to work. If you think about the fact that I think the Euros final is on what, the 15th of July? Um, and then they're probably going to need a two, three week holiday after that. Those that went all the way in the competition. Now, I do think the England boys, although they've been really, really poor so far, and obviously they are in action tonight at the time of recording uh, against Slovenia. I'm sure they'll be better in that game. But you look at their potential path and you feel like they really could go a long way in this competition. So let's say worst case scenario for Arsenal is that Rice, Saka, uh, two players that are really important to our starting eleven don't arrive back until after the final. They're going to need a bit of a break. They're going to go and have that break. And then they're going to come in and they're going to be a part of the preseason. But they're going to be a good couple of weeks behind everybody else. So you might face a situation where you start the new season 
and actually not all of your best players are ready to go. And that's a problem. That's why, though, you need some of these other names to be ready to step in. And it's a big opportunity for those guys as well. Somebody like Emil Smith-Rowe, Fabio Vieira, players that have found themselves on the peripheries. It's an opportunity for them to, to work really hard over the summer, show the boss that they're ready, get an opportunity right at the start of the season. And if they can grab that with both hands, then who knows what happens moving forward. Interesting that Reese Nelson's name is in that list of players because, of course, we know that he is seeking or is at least open to the option of moving on this summer. Um, I think that that's probably true of Eddie Nketia as well, who we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail a little bit later on. Um, but look, all they can do for now is get their heads down, work hard, and, and that's it. And Mikel Arteta, obviously, uh, getting some of the boys together, looking to... Um, to get them into tip-top shape. Good to see Emil Smith-Rowe a part of that. I know he's not on international duty or anything like that, but when you've struggled the way he has to kind of re-establish yourself in this side, to turn up to things like this, to be one of the first to report in for pre-season training and to really show what you can do in that will will show that he's got the right attitude, will show um, that he, of course, um, does really want to fight for a place. I mentioned some of the other names that could be leaving. He could be leaving too, you know. You just never know. Um, but at this moment in time, all of them are Arsenal players and they need to do their bit and impress the boss ahead of the new season. Uh, that takes me on uh, nicely, as we're talking about pre-season, to my next uh, subject. The Emirates Cup takes place uh, this uh, summer, of course, over two separate dates. Um, well, I guess the second one is the Emirates Cup, right? So the arsenal Leon game on the 11th of August is the Emirates Cup. But we also play Bayer Leverkusen at the Emirates a few days earlier. Uh, Granite Xhaka's Bayer Leverkusen, of course. Jabby Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen, a childhood friend of Mikel Arteta. So it's a really, really interesting game. Look, am I going to sit here and pretend that these are going to be the most exciting games on earth? No, but when you get to August and you're desperate for the new season to start, you'll take anything when it comes to watching your club. So I'm looking forward to the games in that sense. Bayer Leverkusen, an interesting opponent to test ourselves against when I'm beaten in the Bundesliga last season, were crowned champions, won the DFB Pokal as well. So they had a really, really good campaign, Bayer Leverkusen. Um, Leon, not quite as strong, you know, ended the season better, but obviously had a difficult campaign last time out. But, you know, they are regulars, it seems, in the Emirates Cup setup. And I'm looking forward to seeing how we get on against them as well. But what this really is, apart from an opportunity for some of those players that we've been talking about to get some minutes under their belt for the team to start tweaking some of the finer details ahead of the new campaign, is a real opportunity for those that don't get to go to the Emirates that often to be able to get hold of tickets. Um, the tickets, I believe, go on general sale on the 1st of July. They're already available to season ticket holders. I was able to log in today and purchase uh, some tickets for me and my son. Um, he's been banging on at me uh, for ages that he wants to go to a game. But obviously, when I'm working the games in the Premier League and given how difficult it is to get hold of tickets, I can't send my five-year-old on his own with my season ticket. So it's been a little bit difficult to get him to the game. So I am really, really excited about taking him along. I've booked my ticket um, along with him for Sunday, the 11th of August, when we take on Olympic Lyonnais. And I'm going to break the news to him a little bit later today when he gets home from school. But look, it isn't the most thrilling of games. Preseason friendlies never are. They tend to start quite well sometimes. And then the pace dies a little bit and things change as teams are building up towards their peak fitness. And I mean, you could argue that when you start the campaign, you're not even at peak fitness. But what I would say is if you're, I'm in an R in and you're not someone that gets to go to the Emirates very often, whether it be, um, you know, because it costs an arm and a leg, which it bloody does, or just because you find it difficult to get tickets, which I sympathize with a lot of people for, then this is an opportunity to get hold of some tickets. A lot of the regulars, if you like, a lot of the season ticket holders will probably be on their holidays um, and might not fancy this, given that they've just forked out for a season ticket. So, yeah, um, real opportunity. Keep your eyes out for uh, when they come out on sale to your particular group. And, um, and I'd encourage you to go if you can. Great uh, opportunity to take kids as well. I always think the Emirates Cup, which is what I'm really looking forward to.
Right, on to our next story, and it concerns the PSV Eindhoven winger, Johan Bakayoko, a player that we saw up close last season when we met them, of course, in the UEFA Champions League. And according to reports in Belgium, Arsenal could beat the competition from major rivals to sign the PSV winger. The Gunners are now uh, the number one track, is how the translations come out, for the young Belgian. There is currently no question of an agreement, but the file, so the case, or is how they've tried to put it, is moving in the right direction. Obviously, when you translate these things, they don't always make sense. But in a nutshell, what they are saying is that Arsenal are, in their eyes, the favourites to land Johan Bakayoko this summer, currently on international duty, of course, with Belgium. There's no agreement in place as it stands, but things are moving in the right direction. Johan Bakayoko, I think he's a player with a lot of promise. He's a player that very nearly joined Brentford not that long ago, um, but then decided to stay at PSV Eindhoven for another year. They were going to pay, I think, around about 40 odd million pounds for him. So you'd imagine that Arsenal would have to pay something uh, in a similar region. Very similar to Bukayo Saka in his profile in that he does like to cut into a lot of the same spaces, a left-footed player who operates predominantly from the right-hand side. But I don't know if this interest being concrete, and I haven't heard it anywhere else apart from uh, these Belgian outlets that have been sort of cycling this news around over the last 24 hours or so. So again, like we say, with all of the stories that we're touching on over the course of the summer, take it with a pinch of salt. But I know he's a player that a lot of Arsenal fans have been looking at for quite some time. And he's a player with a growing reputation. Johan Bakayoko, who I thought up until 24 hours ago was more likely to go to Liverpool than anywhere else. Sasha Tavalieri, a uh, well-known Belgian journalist, has also said that Chelsea are in the mix here as well. Chelsea are in the mix with bloody everyone, aren't they? But Liverpool said to be keeping an eye. Arsenal are said to be the favourites at the moment. I don't know what that's based on, but keep your eyes on that one. Johan Bakayoko, could he be an Arsenal player come the start of the new season? And finally, to round off today's uh, rather brief episode, because, you know, we're not going to spend too much time on the football because the football takes place after I record this. So we will do a slightly longer extended edition of the pod tomorrow in which we will focus on England against Slovenia as well. But I did want to touch on this story. Arsenal, according to reports, value Eddie and Ketia at £50 million pounds and have set that as their asking price, should they sell him this summer? £50 million. Pounds. Now, listen, I think Eddie Nketiah, as I've discussed before, would be a good asset to a lot of Premier League clubs. I think he's shown when, on the rare occasion, he's been given regular game time, that he can contribute goals, that he is a player that probably struggles a lot at the moment because of a lack of rhythm, because of the fact that he's not in a side regularly. I always say it, goal scoring is a habit. And how can you get into that habit when you're not faced with match situations all that often? He would have been the deputy uh, to Gabriel Jesus. And obviously then when it was decided and determined that Kai Havertz would move into that centre forward position, he fell even further down the pecking order, which has been unfortunate for him. But I still think he's a player that could do a job at a lot of the Premier League clubs. Certainly those from sort of eighth downwards. I think most of them would probably take Eddie and Ketia if the price was right. I don't think there's that much of a question around whether he's good enough to be a Premier League striker. I think the question around Eddie has always been, OK, but is he good enough to be the striker at one of the Premier League's elite clubs? And I think over time, based on what I've seen, I've got to say the answer is probably no. Um, £50 million, pounds, though, does feel like a hell of a lot of money to be asking for someone who's your third choice striker and who's at a point in his career where he probably desperately needs to move on. I remember sort of when we signed him on that new deal, it was a five-year deal, right? And it was um, £100,000 a week is, is what it was rumoured at. And people were were throwing their toys out of the pram. I can't believe that we're going to give Eddie Nketiah £100,000 a week. Well, we didn't need to pay a transfer fee to bring in another striker. And actually, by giving him that deal, what we did was protect our asset. In total, over the course of the entire five years, that deal stands to cost us £26 million. 
Okay. Now, when did he sign that last contract? Let's just check that up because I, I want to make sure that I'm giving you the right calculation here because I've been thinking about this a little bit earlier today um, and trying to kind of do the maths in my head and figure out at, at what point we make profit on this. So um, let me just explain to you my thinking and my calculations. Bear with me. My internet is running a little bit slow at the moment, which is not ideal when you're uh, in the middle of a live pod or it's not live is it but in the middle of a pod okay so look he signed that new deal in 2022 okay so he's two years into it right so he's two years into it now the five years would have cost us a total of 26 million pounds if you divide that by five years it's 5.2 million per year okay so in having him for these two years after he signed that deal, it's cost us 10.4 million pounds. Now, if we sell Eddie and Ketia for anything more than 10.4 million pounds, we've made our money. If we sold him this summer for 50 million pounds, then we'd have made five times what we paid him over the course of those two years. So it's really, really good business when you look at it like that. Don't be obsessed with the fact that he's on a big salary. Think about that salary across the term of the contract the fact that it protects his value. And we did it at a time when he was about to walk away on a free transfer. So think about it that way. Arsenal were going to pay 26 million to have Eddie Nketiah at the club for that five-year period. But that was never the plan. The plan was always to sell him at some point during that period, in which case you're not actually outlaying the 26 million pounds. And anything that you can make above 26 million pounds, even if you get them to the last year, would be profit. But if you sell him in the second year, like we're thinking of doing, even if you got yourself 20 million pounds, you've still doubled what you've paid him in the last couple of years. So there's still a significant portion of profit there. Plus, he's a homegrown player and all the rest of it. It really helps in terms of the books. Um, you know, it would make a lot of sense. But I have to say 50 million is outrageous. I'm all for setting your stall high and, and trying to make sure that you get the best deal possible. And often that involves starting from a, a really unrealistic uh, negotiating position and obviously slowly being brought down with the uh, potential buyer slowly creeping up. And the hope is that at some point you're going to meet where you both think it's reasonable and you'll get a deal done. But £50 million is ridiculous. It's excessive. If we got 2025 for Eddie and Ketty, I'd be over the moon with that. Because as I say, if, if we've spent £10 million on this contract over the course of two years, uh, we've then doubled that money. Uh, by selling him, but it goes down on our books as 25 million of pure profit. So I'd be absolutely buzzing with that if we could get that. I don't think for a second that we get anywhere near the 50 million pound mark. And I think the club probably know that. Um, are the clubs, are the club the ones briefing this out? I wouldn't know because it's not my information. Um, but if it is, it feels like that would put people off rather than encourage people to come to the table with offers for Eddie and Katia. So I'm not really sure what the benefit of doing that would be, if that makes sense. I think when there's a player like Eddie and Katia that a lot of clubs would probably buy at if they thought the price was right, but wouldn't necessarily go out on a limb for, then actually, if you put a more realistic figure out there in terms of what you're asking for, you're probably going to get more bites. And I know that whatever figure you put out there, you're probably going to be knocked down on. But you could have said 30 million, you could have said 35 million, and that would have been a lot more realistic than the 50 million pounds that Arsenal are said to be asking for. It's not my information. I can't corroborate that information in any way, shape or form, but it's coming from a few people um, who are known for having connections and ties to the Arsenal. So we'll wait and see how that goes. Uh, that brings me to the end of today's episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, just in time for my kids to run into the garden and start screaming. I will see you all on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Goodbye.